tutti i benvenuti alla seconda uh, parte del nostro walker e adesso abbiamo con noi l'amico Omar di Os che ci parlerà della nuova via, della nuova vita di Gutenberg, di Wordpress of Gutenberg. Welcome to the second session of uh, Welcome Party. We are going to have uh, Omar from Os Um, which needs no presentation for all of us and uh, you will talk to us about the new way of WordPress to view them uh, this is uh, one of the longest talks today and uh, all of us speak in English so please uh, be quiet and pay attention uh, so Omar, have a good time Hello everyone, let me get used to this microphone. Uh, thank you all for uh, like being back early from lunch. I'm going to, uh, my name is Omar Rice, I'm a CTO at Yoast. Um, I studied philosophy, made a weird trip into technology, programming, landed in Yoast, and like four years ago, there I Uh, was a 12 employee. Now we are 85 people in Yos. And uh, we're growing really fast. And we love open source and we love WordPress. This talk is about the new way to WordPress. It's, it's a talk about what's coming, Gutenberg. Andrea Zandino gave a talk earlier about uh, plugin and team development in a Gutenberg age. I think we already told you a lot of uh, stuff about Gutenberg. Maybe I will repeat some of that, uh, but it's good to hear those things twice because uh, this is really an important big, big change for the WordPress ecosystem. And I would like to make this talk as interactive as possible. So whenever you have a question, uh, please raise your hand and uh, I will give you uh, the chance to ask a question right away and maybe you can even change the order of the talk. So, first of all, can I see a raise of hand, like, who has tried out Gutenberg? Who has seen it? Like, worked with it? Okay, written it. Okay, so for those people, some things might, might not be new, but I will do some demo, I will show you a little bit what it looks like. Um, to explain what Gutenberg is and what it's going to mean for WordPress, it's just best to immediately start off with a demo. So that's what I'm going to do. So, what I always do when I start talking about Gutenberg this is, I think, the a time that I can talk about it, is I start with look, taking a look at the classic editor, because we know this, and we're used to it, and we work with it every day, and uh, I like to take the time to appreciate it for a second for what it does. Because what we have here is maybe a bit limited, but it does its job really, really well, and has been doing so for 14 years. And what we have is just a simple content editor, which looks and feels very much like something like Microsoft Word text editor, and uh, helps you to, to write content in a way that you can see what it's going to look like. And there's all kinds of extensibility possibilities. So what you've seen is that I installed a plugin here that gives extra features. Going to the to the tiny MC editor here. So you have some extra stuff that you can do here. I have a gallery plugin and you can insert a gallery in this, in this position. I added a subtitle plugin. You can just add a subtitle here. You have the menu box with Joe Cicero. You have some information here about the state of your content. Like it's, a, it's quite a powerful tool. And please come in, take a seat. Participate, ask questions, you're welcome. Um, so this is this is really nice. And now let's let's take a look at 
what is this going to look like in Gutenberg? So let's say Gutenberg comes, becomes part of WordPress, WordPress 5.0 is released, and it includes Gutenberg. What are you going to see in your screen? This is what you're going to see in your screen. And it's quite, uh, it looks really beautiful, if you ask me. But it's a bit scary because, you know, where is the subtitle? Where is that thing to have extra options? Uh, where's my text editor? Where is my, my uh, status? Uh, where is the button to insert the gallery? I don't know. It's gone. And the reason I start with this is to show you that this is really a significant change. And whenever Gutenberg ships with WordPress, it's going to impact everyone. And it depends on if you have a lot of integrations in the editor or not. Uh, but this is definitely something that you need to prepare for, blogging authors need to prepare for, team authors need to prepare for everyone, and users need to be, be prepared for it. Um, because this is, this, this is a shock, but there's a good reason that we're doing this. Because the, the previous editor that I just showed you has a lot of shortcomings. Um, who here knows page builders, has used the page builder? Okay, it's like, usually it's most people. And those things are immensely popular, so uh, just being able to edit content often is not good enough if you want to uh, build pages. And we have Visual Composer, and we have Elementor, and we have, what's your call, I think call it? Bricks. And we have Beaver Build, and you know, you know the page builders. And they have millions of users. What does this tell us? Well, basically it tells us WordPress isn't such a good platform for website creation. So we need to improve it. And then we see the rise of platforms like Squarespace and Wix and other uh, really intuitive uh, website builders that are becoming very popular and becoming easier solutions to create a website for many people. So this also tells us we need to improve the WordPress experience. And Gutenberg and the new editor is the first step towards that. So, from an editor perspective, not a lot has changed. It's still a title. Okay, it's going to be hard to type with one hand. Um, I can still add content. It's going to be really intuitive to add an uh, image. I can add an image here. And, well, maybe I want to turn it into a gallery. I can do that here. Oh, it's really easy. Um, The thing doesn't work entirely as expected. Let me try that one more time. And I can configure the gallery to... Okay, this doesn't work as expected at all. Let me just add a couple of things at a time. So I have a gallery here. And I can customize how many columns there are, all that kind of stuff. And then I can just publish it. And what you saw there was like a big workflow change. I'll show you show it to you again later. Uh, so I've configured here what it looks like, and then um, when I view the post, I see here post gallery. Um, it just works like like you're used to. So we still have a, a good content editor, but it's become a little bit more intuitive. I have here an element, uh, a, a 
a block switcher, I can just choose a block that I want to add, which is what I want to add on this. And have basically all the functionality in there that, uh, that you're used to from the old editor, but it's become much more composable. And this in itself might not be revolutionary. I mean, you can still edit content, right? But as a platform for a future ecosystem with, with plugins and uh, uh, building new experience on top of this, this becomes really interesting. One thing, for instance, that I'm quite enthusiastic about is uh, the possibility to reuse something. So what I can do here is I can convert a block to a shared block. I give it the name. And then I just add a new post somewhere. Maybe David Speaks. And now I want to add that same gallery again. Just add it from the ship, from the saved block. So let me repeat that action so you can see what just happened. I want to add that saved block. I go here to the shared blocks. I have here the Bari gallery, and I just in, in, include it into my post. And this is another post about Bari. Okay, uh, let me publish it for a second. Like something that's going to be possible is improved workflow. So one thing that we might do here is. You see, when you click the publish button, you don't publish immediately. It can ask you some questions, and this is really useful. For instance, maybe you haven't optimized your post for SEO, or maybe you haven't uh, set a meta, uh, metadata for Google, or maybe you uh, want to publish your uh, content straight away to Facebook, for instance. We can create integrations here that just add a checkbox or at a warning, like, hey, you still have to uh, do your Google data, metadata, and then before you do that, then you hit publish, and then it's published. Okay. Um, and you see here also, there's a, so this is called the pre published workflow. What you also see here immediately is that there is a post published workflow. So, Something like posting to social media is something that could be included in the post publish workflow as well. So this, this adds a lot of content management uh, possibilities that improves workflows in, in, in content creation. Now, we were talking about this thing before, right? This is a shared block. Let me change this block. Let me just take away this image, save it, and then we go to that page. Then we go to that other post, and here we see this, this shared block was updated here as well. So we can have pieces of content information on our website that is shared amongst different places. And when you think about this, who needs a meta box for a testimonial if you can have? Testimonial block which you can just save. Right? We need a testimonial plugin. Now maybe you have a testimonial plugin that just adds some styling to a testimonial block or something like that. Who needs? Well, maybe it's useful, but in theory, who needs a forms plugin which you can just have a form block which you can configure and save and make sure its data gets gets saved to some place. Things become so much simpler. So can you see that the what you see is what you get experience that Gutenberg offers is extremely powerful. And once we build on top of this platform, we get a much better user experience. So now you go to a custom post type, you configure a, a, a form, it's complex, you don't know exactly what it's gonna look like. In the future, you're gonna add just here, Block, form, 
configure it, see what it looks like. It's a much better experience. Okay. Another big change here is that everything is dynamic. Everything you see is real time. I can maybe show you this. You see, I, anything I customize, I see immediately the feedback in the editor what it's going to what it's going to do. And some presets. I can uh, enable drop cap, which doesn't look like anything here. But okay. Like when this works. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a much better user experience. And that also means that integration with the editor for any plugin, any theme, any, anything that, any page builder even, is going to be much more contextual. It's going to be much more possibilities of making a better content writing experience. And I'm going to show you some examples of that. Based on this demo, anything you want to see me try, you want to see me do? Because I'm going back to the slides now. Okay, okay. I'm going to the slides. Because, as I said, Gutenberg is going to offer lots of new possibilities. And one thing that we are thinking about at Yoast, like, you know, right? Yoast is very deeply integrated into the content. So we have a content analysis tool that constantly uh, analyzes the, the content on the side and gives you instant feedback. Uh, we, ha we have many kinds of integration. We have in premium, you have uh, internal linking suggestions tools on the side, shows you possible other articles on your site that you can link to. So we're thinking about how can we make Gutenberg more powerful to give inline feedback. And this is going to be probably one of our most beautiful contributions to the Gutenberg project. It's not finished, it's now only a concept, it's a mock-up. But the kind of thing that you can do in this new editor is just have collaborative features like this. You can comment, you can select a piece of text, you can comment on it, you can have a, uh, as a, you can accept or reject the comment, you can have a discussion about it. It's like, it's like a conversation in the content editor itself. And when you are on that website and you're working with multiple uh, people and you have maybe content writers and then you have content editors, you don't need to do that whole process in Google Docs anymore. You can just do it in WordPress. And it's going to be a nice and clean, uh, intuitive experience. Um, but what you can also use this kind of thing for is we, we can add an API which allows you to, yeah. How, how do you do this? So this doesn't, this is not in Gutenberg yet. This is an idea. We're building this. So the first thing we're building is that you can highlight pieces of text. The second thing we're building is that you can comment. And then when you have You'll have like a button here, I think here on the top, you see that button to add a comment. Um, but you can also, of course, automate that process. So you can maybe have a bot or a plugin automatically create a comment. So when you have here the first paragraph of your text and you forget, for instance, the focus keyword in Yoast SEO, you can put a comment here with a Yoast logo saying you should put the focus keyword here, something like that. So the question is, where would you like to save conversation information? Well, the, the idea is that WordPress already has comments. <laughs> so you want to add a comment type, which is annotation. And you can just store all comments as a comment uh, in WordPress, like, like regular comments on the front end of the page. Yeah, it's, it's exactly the same kind of conversation. Why I give this example? Because it's a very powerful 
example of how Gutenberg can become a powerhouse and become a much better tool for content creation than the current WordPress editor is. And plugins can utilize it, for instance, to give contextual feedback based on SEO copywriting or readability checks, or maybe we can do suggestions for internal linking that is on the blog level itself. So we can just, you know, analyze the blog, say, well, according to our anal analysis, this blog is about this word, this, this, uh, this information. We found other posts on your site that relate to that. Maybe you can link to them. So we give a list of links and we show you the words and it will be very easy and intuitive to, to link within your website. All this kind of powerful, intelligent kind of functionality can be built on top of a system like this. Excuse my F, I'm very quite sharp. Another thing that we are probably gonna be have ready in the in the summer before WordCamp Europe is a sidebar. We also have been very worried about how are going our plugins going to integrate with Gutenberg. So we have contributed a great deal to the Gutenberg project with a lot of our developers and designers. One thing that we made available for everyone in collaboration with the Gutenberg team is the possibility to add a sidebar. You can have, uh, there is a menu here. You can have a drop down. You can have your plugin listed in there. I don't have a mock-up of that. Uh, you can even pin your plugin logo to the uh, toolbar here. And then you can just activate your own sidebar. And then, so WordPress becomes a very clean content writing tool. And when you want to focus on SEO, you just enable here the SEO mode and you get all the feedback from this. Because this is a big change for people, we will keep having the meta box down below, like we, I, I just showed you in the demo, I think you saw it. And we'll initially we'll create a system that you can just eject it from the meta box and put it here. Because we think this is a better experience. Because you, you'll see on the right exactly feedback on what you're doing here. Any plugin can create a sidebar like that. We've added the API for that to Gutenberg itself. There's documentation starting today, actually a, a month ago, anyone can add a sidebar. If you're an agency and you're building a project for a customer, you can also create a sidebar for that customer. If you have metadata that you want to edit that you normally do in a meta box, you could create a sidebar for that. Right? And then you're not in the line of the content, but you're actually on the side editing metadata that is about the content. So the whole experience becomes better. And it's relatively easy, once you get the hang of it, to do it. Another example of, uh, a recent example, I think Andrea also showed it, that uh, was uh, done by uh, WooCommerce. You can, of course, create your own custom blocks. So basically, what I said earlier, any kind of piece of metadata, anything you would use a custom field for, something like t-shirt size or, uh, I don't know, a color or thing or something like that, can all be a block setting. And you can just have it represented in a what you see is what you get fashion and you see what's going to be published. So this is really a, a major possible improvement. I think uh, it's pretty much done. Uh, you see, you can make all kinds of customization things going on, make it bigger. I'm going to skip to the next slide. Because, yeah, I started basically by showing you that a lot of things might break. And these, these were the examples, right? These things, like for instance, we have a Maps plug. Uh, we have a local SEO plugin, and what this does, it gives you an address, short code, and a map, and opening hours, and store locator, all that kind of stuff. Well, this is not going to work anymore, but what will, and what makes much more sense, blocks. So these things, 
will still be insertable, but through the block inserter. You have to do work to make that happen, but if you do so, it becomes a much better experience. So Yoast Local SEO in a couple of releases will no longer have these buttons in the, in the Gutenberg editor, but it will just have blocks. This functionality, the advanced IMCE functionality, is still available in Gutenberg on the classic block, classic editor block, thank you. Uh, it's not available on other blocks. Um, something like a subtitle, it's a very good example of something that should be a block. Because actually the title, even though it's a magical thing, is also a block in Gutenberg. It's a, it's a block that's fixed to the top, so you, you cannot move it, but it, it looks the same, it, it behaves the same, it has its own settings, it also has a sidebar where things can be configured. But you need to be aware that things might break. Okay, so what is the current status? There's a lot of pressure in the WordPress community to get this thing merged. There are quite some reasons for that. One is, I think probably the most important reason is that right now WordPress core development is pretty much at a standstill. Like nothing is moving. No one dares to commit anything that's not Gutenberg related. This is really bad for the community. So there is some pressure to uh, get this thing out so we can start working on the other stuff again. It's pretty bad reason probably, but uh, the, I think this is a social dynamic that that should be that we should be aware of because there is there might be some emotional pressure also that makes this land sooner than later, uh, and you just have to be aware of that. I heard Andrea rightfully so say, "Well, this might take another year or two, but this might also take another week <laughs> or two." Uh, but I mean, really, it could be. Merge proposal could land before WordCamp Europe, which is in six weeks. Uh, maybe it doesn't. You see here that there's still a lot of work to be done. So what, what the Gutenberg team considers uh, the status is, is what they have listed here in all the, all the milestones that they have. So the accessibility still has 10 open issues. There are many more accessibility issues than 10. But these are the 10 that are, are listed for merge proposal. Uh, backwards compatibility still has quite some open issues. REST API issues, there are still quite some open issues. So this is not going to land tomorrow probably, but uh, we're working at a really fast pace and we're working really hard to get this in as fast as we can. Issues that have been around for a long time and, and are still around to some extent are extensibility. So how easy is it for a plugin to integrate with this thing? Uh, accessibility, uh, REST API issues, because everything in Gutenberg is done in JavaScript. So everything is done in the browser. All the data is fetched from the server. It's not, the page is no longer rendered in the server. So what it used to be was just a form that was rendered in the server. Now it's completely dynamic JavaScript application that saves data to the server and gets data from the server and it, there's a lot of REST API implications. So we need a REST API for that and not all of the endpoints are working as they should be, not all of the data uh, 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 processing is working as it should be. So that's something that has a, big, uh, big, a lot of attention at the moment. A lot of effort has gone to usability, uh, but I think we still need much more testing. And backwards compatibility, plugin compatibility, well, after what I just showed you, it must be clear that this is still an issue. And we might not solve it entirely. So let me go a little bit deeper into those different areas. The current state of accessibility, a lot has happened since uh, like a year ago. Um, we now have, we've had for some time now, a block API. So you can create your own custom blocks. You can uh, 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 
have settings with them, you can style them, all that kind of stuff. You can add theme uh, styling, like Andrea showed you. So this is the most of this stuff, I think Andrea covered it. We also have a plugin API now. You can register a plugin. You can register components for a sidebar, for instance. So you can render your own sidebar. You can render your own models on top of the of the of the editor with uh, with settings. Uh, you can have a, your plugin listed in that top right menu. Um, yeah, there, there's quite some stuff that's now possible with the plugin API. We have a data API. For developers, this is especially relevant. Uh, there is a lot, like everything in Gutenberg, everything in the editor is represented in data, is a representation of some kind of data state. This data is now fully observable. So whatever the state of the application is, you can observe it. And there are APIs for that. And there's documentation about how you can do that. I'll point you to that documentation in a second. And you can also, to some extent, ah, you can also register your own data store and you can make those your own data. So Yoast will have its own sort of data store in the browser. Everyone will be able to access it. So this means that integrating with Yoast SEO or any other plugin that uses this uh, uh, APIs will be much po more powerful, much, much easier, much more stable. Uh, it's a pretty technical thing to talk about, but I have to, to name it. And you can also, to some extent, manipulate the data of the editor as a whole, or even Yoast data, or that kind of stuff. And then there is something that's familiar to most of you. There are hooks. There's a hooks API that was released a couple of months ago that is also being used in Gutenberg, and it works like you're used from the PHP. We have actions and filters. Thank you. Um, this is what we have right now. We need some more UI extensibility features. Uh, we need some more possibilities for plugins to integrate into the UI of the new editor. This is all generic work. So whatever we build after this will have all the tools necessary to make it extensible and to make it nice for plugins to play with it. And this was a really big problem in, in, in front. Uh, current state of accessibility, well, accessibility has been a major pain point from the start. Um, that's because the way this project has gone has been a lot of experimentation and if you have to think about all kinds of production concerns when you're experimenting, that takes a lot of energy, so they decided not to invest in that. Um, we're now paying the price. The keyboard it's still hard to use Gutenberg with keyboard only. I can show you a little example of that. Uh, mobile, there are still a few issues left. I don't know, anyone has an iPhone here? If you have an iPhone, you select text in, in Gutenberg, you get a toolbar above the block, but you also get a toolbar from the iPhone, copy, paste, all that kind of stuff. It's on top of the toolbar of Gutenberg, so you can't do anything. Uh, those kinds of issues. Uh, screen readers, still hard to use. And the main problem is, so a lot of energy has been invested already to improve these things. But the main problem is just that we have so much more moving piece, uh, bits and pieces in this system that uh, discoverability is an issue, for instance. When you don't know how this thing works and you come to it from the first, uh, for the first time, it's hard to discover what all the features are if you're only using a screen reader. And the plan right now is to focus as much as possible on the low-hanging fruit and to make the baseline experience for using good work uh, as good as possible. It's important to know this. Uh, plugin compatibility. A lot of time is being invested by the community as well in this, uh, exploring that. As you know, meta boxes will pretty much still work. Um, Daniel Backhuber has launched a project which is called plugincompat.danielbackhuber.com. It's like a big database of all the plugins. And you can see which ones are compatible with Gutenberg and which aren't. And we need to start working on that. 
A uh, question that many people have is, what happens to my custom fields? <laughs> well, like Andrea also pointed out, there are solutions for that that are completely uh, native to Gutenberg and uh, advanced custom fields uh, is itself also working on uh, a native in in integration with Gutenberg. So you should be covered whenever Gutenberg drops, uh, ACF will still work. Okay, and this is a famous tweet by Joost, the Valk CEO of Joost. Ask not what WordPress can do for you, but also what you can do for WordPress. So what can you do? Test, please. Get Gutenberg, go to Frontenberg, <laughs> Google Frontenberg, I'll, I'll put those links in, in, in my slides. Uh, test the thing, try it out, especially on sites that, that are using plugins. Uh, if you have a local copy somewhere, try, look what happens. We need more feedback, even though we've been working on this for one and a half year, and we've had a lot of feedback, we still need more feedback because the scope of WordPress is just humongous. 30% of the web is running it. Share it. Share your feedback. And you can do that uh, in Gutenberg itself. I'll show you that. And you can also do that on GitHub. I'll actually show you how you do that in Gutenberg itself. There's Gutenberg here. And there's feedback here. And you can just send your feedback. It's very important. Back to the presentation. Spread the word. Anyone you know who doesn't know needs to know. <laughs> this is coming. It might be one, two years. <laughs> I wouldn't count on it. It might be a couple of weeks, months. Okay? We can fix a lot. We won't be able to fix everything. Um, there are some solutions to mitigate the damage, but uh, you have to see that 14 years, we've built on top of an, an ancient platform. Now we're building the platform to build the next 14 years. Some things are going to be a little bit less stable. But it's important, as many people as possible get to prepare for this. And start integrating. If you're an agency, plugin, theme, try out those APIs. Those APIs that are available right now to integrate they are still not released. I mean, they are released in Gutenberg, but they are still not in WordPress. That means that if you have a problem with the APIs, if it's too complex to integrate with Gutenberg, if, if you want anything changed and made more simple, this is the moment to figure it out, because we can still maybe change something. I think we've done a quite a good job, but I have to know, we have to know. And ask for help. In your local meetup, there's this site, I just love, love the initiative. Uh, it's called Getting Ready for Gutenberg. If you have a plugin with over 500 installs, I think, or 5,000 maybe, you can get help from them. And there's lots of resources. You can go to WordPress Slack, and people are very much willing to help out anything you don't get about Gutenberg. And when all else fails, there is the classic editor plugin. But it won't be maintained forever, probably. And the other thing is that whenever Gutenberg lands in 5.0, in WordPress itself, the default experience people will have is a WordPress with Gutenberg. And basically, whenever you install the classic editor, like the, f the first experience you will have is, yeah, we're downgrading your experience because we can, because, because we're not, it's just not ready, we're just not ready to deal with it yet. It's not a pretty message. Um, if we can avoid it, we should avoid it. I want to take a brief moment to talk about um, opportunities, because there are a lot of opportunities with a, when a big change like this comes. So plugins. Think about how you can integrate deeply with the editor. Whatever you do, 
to create custom blocks for uh, a content uh, unit that you, you add to a site. If you give feedback on the text like Yoast does or whatever, deep integration will make Gutenberg a better product and it will make your plugin a better product and it will ultimately benefit the, the end user experience. Themes, same thing. If you have a theme, make sure it's not that much work to inter, uh, include uh, the theme styling in Gutenberg. If that's not easy enough, give the feedback because it should be easy. Creating themes for WordPress has always been easy. If it becomes much harder now, then we need to know about it. Uh, often themes have some custom uh, functionality, some custom, uh, some custom uh, elements. These things need to be in Gutenberg. I need to be able to access them. Or I need to be able to how this is going to look like. Page builder plugins. It's very simple. You already have elements. Make sure those elements are stored as blocks and you're fine. And if you do this, and Elementor is going to do this, and Beaver Builder is going to do this, you're going to have an advantage that you never had before. You're going to be compatible with everyone because you have standardized on the platform itself. Right? You used to have your own little systems for storing elements and all that kind of stuff was never compatible with Yoast and with other plugins. If you store them as blocks, people can go to the block editor for the optimization and they can go to the page builder for the customization and the design and the, the, the whole experience will be better. Agency. If you're an agency or freelancer working for customers, start putting together an information pack. If you are together with other freelancers in a community like this, work on that together. And then start informing your customers. And it doesn't mean Oh, this change is coming, I can fix it for you, you have to pay me money. No, this is not what I'm talking about. It's nice, you can probably make, some, uh, make a good buck of this change, but you say, this is coming, I know about it, these are your options. You can install Classic Editor, it won't cost you a lot. I can optimize your site for you, it will cost you something, but your experience will be much better. So you have a lot of flavors to sell to your customers. And the most important thing is trust because you know, you give the information, you warn them, you help them get through this. It's a good experience for end users. In the end, in the end that, that brings a big opportunity for the end user because if everything goes well, after the storm, we'll have a much better user experience for WordPress. I've listed some important resources in my slides. I'll share those slides after the talk. Uh, there's an important thought piece about, uh, from Matthias Ventura, who's the lead of the, uh, the Gutenberg project. Uh, it's called Gutenberg or the Ship of Theses. At Joost.com, we've, uh, we've written a lot about Gutenberg. You can just follow the tag. And Morten Rand Hendrickson, also a distinguished WordPress community member, has written extensively about this as well. And there's some videos that you can watch. And I would definitely also recommend the project that we have at Yoast. It's called The Good Guys. And it's a full YouTube series about Gutenberg explaining every little detail there is to tell about Gutenberg. You can also send in questions and they'll answer it for you. These both, both of my colleagues, Anton and Tim, are working lots of hours a week on the Gutenberg project itself and are part of the Gutenberg team. And that was it. Do we have time for one or two questions? Is there a mic? In terms of page, uh, speed upload. Did you make some test uh, about it on how it could affect speed? The, yes, the website speed. Yeah, thank you. So, at the beginning, um, because everything is a block in Gutenberg, uh, you need some kind of parser on the front end to generate the page, right? 
and this can be uh, expected to be a little bit slow. So in the beginning there were big problems with that. Now they fixed most of those problems and I think there's almost no speed decrease from what, I, from what I've last heard. But this is also important to test. And especially on big pages. And also, how fast is the editor when there's a lot of content in it? I, I, we need this to be better tested. Like one of the primary objectives for the Gutenberg project is to get more and more users so we get better and better feedback because we can't cover all the cases. But so far, so good. We don't, we're not aware of any uh, dramatic speed decreases. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, is there any news about the um, features in the next uh, version of WordPress of uh, um, try the Gutenberg button we have talked about? Uh, yeah. So. I'm not sure if the next minor release of WordPress is going to include it, but I think they were planning on that. And it's, uh, it, so there's going to be a minor release of WordPress, like 497 or something, and it will include a notification inviting people to install and try Gutenberg. And it will announce it like, this is going to be the new editor for WordPress, try it now, something like that. Um, we, it, we have postponed it a couple of times because it was supposed to land in April, this notification. Uh, but it, I think it will, it might, this might actually arrive before we're computer. Yeah. Hi, Johan. Um, you mentioned that, of course, you need, uh, being a structured data, you need a parser on the front end to, you know, out to the page. Does the parser have an API or not? Um, I'm not sure, but to, I think I think it will because yeah. most of the uh, PHP in WordPress is always using filters and actions, so probably it will have a classic WordPress API. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? All right. Thank you very much for your attention.